Hi, we're Chris and Cindy. We're living a champagne life on a beer budget. From boats to exotic cars to living on the shoreline, we feel as though we're making the most out of our lives. We would love to show you how you can live a champagne life on a beer budget too. So come along for the ride. Here we are at the boat again. It is November and it's cold, so we're bundling up. So we are prepping the boat so we can pull it at our new marina. We are planning on keeping the boat near our house so we can finish getting the engines running. There's a lot of prep work that goes into getting your boat off the dock. And for us, it's even more because we're not returning to this dock until next year. So we're disconnecting the power and taking all of our lines with us. Now this is where I start getting a little testy and annoyed because Chris likes to hover over everything I do because he doesn't believe in my abilities. Yeah, because I felt like he was hovering, I got snotty with him and he yelled at me. It was taking everything out of us to not keep snapping at each other. We were stressed out. We had had problems with the boat for years and we just needed to get it to the new marina. Alrighty. 
So I finished taking the lines off the dock, and then that happened. And then it happened again. And again. And again. At this point, we thought, oh my gosh, the coast is clear. We're on our way. And then it happened again. Up. So at that point, I told Chris, let's back it into the slip. That's it. We're done. We're good. I got it. If I can back up, I can turn it hard. Well, let me grab a line. What happened? I had had it by this time, but I didn't realize Chris didn't understand that I meant back it up. We're keeping it at this marina. What's your plan? I don't know. I'm just trying to get a line to the boat. Where on the boat? And that's when he figures out my plan. Now this is when I'm about to snap. Here it comes. I'm huffing and puffing and so mad. I'm still trying to figure out what he's doing.
Meanwhile, I'm battling a cold on top of all this stress. So I just stand there and let him do his thing. Should I cut the engine? To the engine? I apologize for the nose running and the coughing. Some more huffing and puffing. More huffing and puffing. And now I gotta give him a piece of my mind and make sure he knows I'm mad. Now let me just tell you, when I'm mad, it takes me a while to get over it. And I feel bad watching this as I'm talking because Chris is trying to be nice. You don't have a boat? You won't understand. There's so much stress that goes along with owning a boat. One of the mechanics that we've had look at our boat comes along What's on the dock. Boat, How you doing? Making progress on the boat, or? Yeah, we've had one engine running, so we're gonna pull it today, and that engine won't stay running. So I said, you know what? We'll just store it here this morning. Where do you normally store it? Uh, normally here, but we're going to keep it over in front of my house. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Right. It's going to be a little closer, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I was thinking it's not even hard. Yeah, well, yeah, if it had been a super calm day, I could see maybe trying it, but yeah. Yeah, it's like four or three. Right? Yeah, it's just not worth trying. Yeah, yeah. you got one, yeah, yeah. Then I have to pay for it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, So after this kind of a day, we needed a break. So we decided to take Chris's Lambo out for a little drive, just to clear our heads. I just want to let you know, we don't just 
enjoy our boat, we go out and we do other things too. This was a really fun dueling pianos night. And there's trouble one. I was trouble two. And we had a blast. So now I'm back at the marina with Chris. We're gonna winterize the boat at the marina where it's stuck. It takes a lot of antifreeze to winterize this boat. So there it comes. I am visiting the boat because I need to pick up our carpet cleaner, which we left at the boat because we had these grand plans of having this amazing boat this summer. <laughs> and that did not work out, obviously. I just thought I would pop in and give you a little update on what happened. We got one engine running on the boat. And we were so excited, like woohoo, it started right up, it idled, it was great, everything was perfect. And then the day that we were going to move the boat to the marina where we were going to store it for the winter, <clears throat> it, it just, the crap hit the fan. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. Um, that one engine that's supposed to be running kept stalling every time we put it into gear. And uh, it just really, it caught us off guard and it, it sucked the wind out of our sails. Like it, it was awful. It was really hard and stressful to know that after working on our boat for two and a half years that it still wasn't running for us. We had to leave the boat at the marina where we had it for the summer and they're gonna pull it. The, you know, it's the end of November and in Connecticut, leaving your boat in this late is pretty bad. And um, they couldn't get us in right away. So uh, our boat is not gonna get pulled until December. We are gonna get this boat fixed up and running and I believe we decided we're gonna put it on the market. It's gonna be a great boat for somebody else because it'll have everything fixed and it'll all be repaired. It just isn't the right boat for us and we had talked about going bigger anyway. Then we talked about going smaller and then the day that the crap hit the fan and that one engine died, Chris decided we're done with boating, which is not gonna happen. But that's where we're at right now. That's how we're feeling. So I thought I would include you guys in that and uh, just walk you down the docks so you can see what a marina in Connecticut looks like in November. And there are actually some snowflakes coming out of the sky right now. So it's crazy. So come walk with me. This is our beautiful marina. It really is gorgeous. That's our little bathhouse, and the pool is right behind it. And here's our boat. So here we go. It is not quite empty yet, and I'm surprised um, that so many boats are still in. We have had a few really nice days to still try to enjoy some boating if your boat's running, <laughs> but clearly that's not an option for us. So here's our dirty, dirty girl. She is filthy. Not only have we given up on the mechanical parts, but we've given up on keeping her clean. <clears throat> that's that, so here she is. We really wanted to love her so much and she just made it so hard. We've actually never showed you the downstairs of our boat. It's quite a mess right now because we've been working on it for two and a half years. Uh, Seabury Sundancers are laid out wonderfully. They have a lot of space in them. So this is uh, the bed where Chris and I stay. And then this uh, settee pulls out into another bed. And then we have the aft cabin, <coughs> which is a tool crib right now and that turns into another bed. So the boat comfortably sleeps five to six people. So that was the tour of our boat. You got to see everything except the galley because for some reason I forgot to show you the galley. It's a very functional boat. It's great. It's laid out so well. Uh, we do love the Sea Ray Sundancer 330 model. 
we just feel like this wasn't the boat for us. It'll be an amazing boat when we put it on the market. So it'll be coming on this spring. We have some cosmetic work we are gonna do to it. And then even though Chris knows what he's doing and he's actually known more than most of the mechanics that have looked at it, we are going to find a really good mechanic in the Long Island Sound, Connecticut area. And we are just going to have a mechanic get it up and running because we have other projects that we need to be working on. As soon as it's ready, I'll give you guys a tour and then it'll go on the market. I'll make sure to let you all know where to find it. And then we are going to be looking for a diesel boat that is between like 42 and 45 feet. So we can spend a little bit more time in it in the summer and be able to, you know, partially live on it for summers. So if you know of any good boats on the East Coast that are diesel boats, uh, fly bridge, you know, between 42 and 45 feet, drop the links below in the comments. We will definitely take a look at that. Uh, until then, we will be enjoying some cold Connecticut weather. And when I say enjoying, I'm joking. We don't enjoy it. And then we have a couple of great trips coming up. We are gonna be going to the Miami Boat Show in February. So keep an eye out for our next video. It'll include some footage from the Miami Boat Show. And we will also be spending some time in St. Thomas and St. John. So our next video will be most likely showing how we escape the winters in Connecticut, but still stay connected to marine and boat life. And then come spring, where we're gonna be starting a new adventure. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And as we get more comfortable with doing these videos, uh, they will get better, I promise. So until then, bye-bye.